In this episode of How It's Made, I'm going to be explaining to you how I made the crankshaft, my SS100 V twin. I went out to the shed yesterday, had a little rummage around and found some spare parts. So I just knocked this up to show you how it's done. The first thing I had to do was strip down the two crankshafts. I put the first crankshaft in my vise using aluminium soft jaws to protect the main shaft. Then, using my special bearing puller, pulled off the bearing. The cam chain drive sprocket also pulls off with the bearing, which is very useful. The bearing puller comprises of several long shafts that engage with the ball race. Then, turning this big bolt at the top, it pulls the bearing up off the crankshaft along with the drive sprocket. So here's the camshaft drive sprocket and here's one of the main bearings. With the main bearings removed, the next job is to press out the crank pin. To do this, I put the crankshaft on my press using a suitable push bar and press it out. It pops out easily. Here's the half of the crankshaft that contains the crank pin and the com rod. I'll take that over to a tin and remove it, making sure not to lose any of the rollers. With the connecting rod removed, the next job is to press out the crank pin. With both the crankshafts stripped, these are the parts I'll need. The two flywheels, two connecting rods, two main bearings, two big end bearings and the crank pin. And this one's just a bit longer. The connecting rod on the left is from a Honda C70 and the connecting rod on the right is from a Honda SS50. They are, they are identical in size and dimensions. The only difference is the little end on the outside is slightly larger on the C70, probably for the extra power. So I remove this from my flapper wheel on my angle grinder to make them the same size and get the weights to match. That's it, they're both 111 grams, perfect. The next thing I have to do is change the balance factor of the crankshaft by removing some metal from the light side to compensate for the extra connection rod and piston. This is very easily done with an angle grinder with one of these one millimeter wide slitting cutters. Absolutely perfect, cuts like butter. With the excess metal removed, I use my angle grinder with the flapper wheel to profile the shape. I follow the raised boss as a guide, just by eye. When I'm happy with the shape, I carefully remove any sharp edges. Back in the garage, I put the flywheel in my vise and use 120 grit Abronet cloth to start cleaning up the profile. <clears throat> then I finish off with my Dremel. This always gives a nice smooth finish. With the crankshaft webs finished and everything clean, it's time to put it together. The first thing I'm going to do is press the crank pin into the right side flywheel web, making sure I line up the oil holes. I use this Honda anti-scuffing paste to prevent galling as the pin is pressed into the flywheel web. I apply a bit to the crank pin and also to the flywheel hole, but you have to be very careful with this anti-scuffing paste. It gets everywhere and it's really hard to get off your hands. With the oil holes aligned, I press in the crank pin. The 
with the crank pin pressed in, I check with my airline that the oil ways are clear. And yep, I can feel the pressure on my fingers from both the oil holes, so that's all good. The next job is to assemble the first big end cage onto the crank pin. I put a smear of ZX1 extra lube grease on the crank pin first, then slide the cage down and making sure the grease has got up into all the little cavities ready to put the rollers in. On these Honda engines, the rollers go in two by two. With all the rollers fitted in the cage, I put on the first connecting rod and it fits great. Now I repeat the process for the second connecting rod, first with the grease, then the cage, then all the rollers, putting them in two by two in their slots. It can be quite fiddly and they quite often stick to your fingers rather than the cage, which can be a bit annoying, but you just have to persevere and eventually they're all in. With the needle rollers all in the cage, I place on the second connecting rod and check it rotates. And it rotates lovely. With both the connecting rods fitted to the right hand crankshaft flywheel, I place the assembly in my press ready to press on the left hand flywheel. A thin smear of anti-scuffing paste on the bore will help the crankshaft slide together nicely without any galling. I line the flywheels up by eye, getting them as close as I can get them. Then, using a suitable push bar, I press it together. I continue to press until the flywheel web presses right down over the crank pin and will go no further. With the crankshaft assembled, I take it over to my lathe and place it between centres. Then, using a DTI, I check for a run out. About 25 thousandths of an inch out. Not bad for a hand assembly by eye, but it has to be a lot better than that. So what you do, you find the high spot, take it out of the lathe and use a big copper hammer to tap it true. This can take several attempts. After truing the crankshaft with my copper hammer, I return it to my lathe and check with the DTI. It's now within half a thou. That'll do perfectly. With the crankshaft running true, I return it to my press and carefully press on the main bearings. The main bearings slide on easily with minimal effort. With both the main bearings fitted, the next job is to fit the cam chain drive sprocket. This slides onto the crankshaft and have to line the teeth up like this. I sometimes use a little pen or a pointer just to make sure it's in line with the centre of the crank pin and it's perfect. I return the crankshaft to my hydraulic press and carefully press on the sprocket until it's home tight against the bearing. And that's it, the crankshaft's finished and ready to fit in the engine. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to be making some more and I wouldn't want you to miss out. And have a look at my channel. If you see a bike you like and you want me to do a more detailed video, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do.